and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how to improve the performance of virtual machine. And for, virtual ma for the performance, I mean the packet uh, per second. So the goal is to try to forward packet as much quickly as possible. So here's a typical setup of the uh, host kernel data pass. So uh, on the left is the most popular configuration is to use a bridge and uh, use tap as is a port and uh, then tap can talk with the hostnet which is doing the translation between the vertile descriptors and host uh, IO vectors and uh, on the right figure is another popular configuration which used the uh, MACV tap. The only difference is that MACV tap is tightly coupled with a uh, underlayer hardware NIC so MACV tap can submit packet directly to the NIC's transmission routine or it can decide to submit to the MAC VLAN layer to do something like bridging or something like this. So we, uh, we, were, uh, we know that we are slow but uh, we don't know how slow we will be. So this is a simple reference test. So the yellow, the, 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 the blue bar is the Linux 4.5 plus VivSonet and the, the red bar is the test PMD which is DPDK based and it, it used the pooling mode driver and we can see that the test PMD can get almost about 12 millions per second but uh, the Linux 4.5 we can only get about uh, around 1 million so the computation is not fair because the test PMD passed the bypass the bridge so I, I just use these figures for your reference so in 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 the in the numbers uh, at the end of slides I will give you a more fair competitions after XDP is used. So this is the agenda. So I will first discuss about uh, the VHOS reading model and then there are four major improvements. Imp includes the busy pooling, the improvements of TAP, and the batched vertical processing and XDP. Then we will evaluate the performance and uh, talking about uh, discuss about uh, the to-do list. So here is the current threading model used by VHostNet. We use one worker thread and we switch between the TX and the RX. So this is not very good because it, it, it ob obviously a half duplex implementation and uh, it may not scale well. For example, if we have a heavy bi-directional traffic. So here's come some several new models. The first is Elvis, which is presented by Abel Gordon. It tries to use dedicated cores for the for, for, for host. And then several different VMs can share a single vhost working worker thread. And it has some optimizations on interrupt processing. And it can also do pooling. So the issue is that uh, it needs something like uh, IO scheduler. So each VM needs at least something like a quarter. So, and it also likes C group support. So, the Bandan Das has presented a, another new ideas, which is the, which is based on the concurrent manageable queue. So, with this method, we can get all benefit from it. For example, the Numa and the dynamic workers, and it can also be C group aware, but it was a little bit expensive to switch between different C groups. For some reasons, all the, the works has been stored. So if you have some more ideas, patches are more than welcome. And for simplicity, uh, we are still using the traditional threading mode. One worker thread for all the traffic. Sorry for the late. So the first thing we can learn from DPDK based solution is that uh, the busy pooling model. So instead instead of waiting for event to happen, which is which is very expensive, for example, uh, when guests want to transmit a packet, it needs first to kick the word queue through MML or PLO, so there will be a VM exit. And then we will switch to the hypervisor mode. Hypervisor we will try to decode the instruction and wake up the VHO thread. So there's an another delay which will be caused by the scheduler and if the traffic comes from the receiving 
The software LQ will also try to wake up the vhost, which is another delay caused by the scheduler. So what we do is that try instead of wait for the event to happen, we try to pull for, for a while. And we expect that something like the packet or something that the packet will become soon. So the overhead of the virtualization and recaps was totally emulated in this case. So during pooling, we, all, we will need to disable all the event source. So instead of wait for them happens, we will try to pull them. And we will also try to exit the busy pooling if there's signal pending or there's a, a high priority process become runnable in the same process. So during the micro benchmark, we can see about five to 20% of improvement and it has some limitations. So first, uh, first of all, compared to the test BMD, it does not uh, a 100% busy pooling implementation, it still needs to wait for the first event to be happen. And this could be done or improved on top. And some user want, may want a balance between the latency and CPU consumption. So we are still trying to investigate a better method. But busy pooling is good enough for us to evaluate the maximum performance now. And so the next step is tries to improve the tab. So tab, tab, tab is has a long history even before the virtualization. So it was not designed for high perform performance packet processing. So the first bottleneck we mentioned we noticed is that the tab is still using the old style socket receive queue. The problem is that the socket receive queue is a uh, double the link list, so it was not very catch friendly. So for example, if we want to insert a, s a, a SKB to the list, we need to touch, for example, the previous node, the next node, the, or the head. So it touched several cache line. It was not very good for us. So it during, during our case, we are in fact doing the fast packet transfer between two process. So usually between the case of the LQD and the VHostNet thread. So one of my colleagues, Michael Tursin, invented a very cache-friendly data structure. So basically it, uh, it was just an array of pointers and the producers and consumers have their own index. And the most interesting part is that, for example, the producer does not need to check the consumer's index because it can it need only to verify against verify the the, the array entries against the now. So for example, if we found the current entry is now, so it, it can produce an entry. So to prevent each side to access their own catch line, we align we align the the index in 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 the in the cache of the specific side. So the producer and the consumer has their own cache line, and the other side won't be touched. And on top of the pointer ring, we implement a wrappers for SKB pointers. So we replace the socket receive queue for tap, and we got about. Uh, 50% of improvement during the micro benchmark. So it works well if the consumer speed match the, the speed of producer, but this is not the case, especially in our case, the consumer is really slow. So in this case, which means that the ring is almost full, so in this case, we will get a very seriously cache line contention because the consumer index and the producer index may refer the date in the same cache line. So we need to do something to solve this. So batch zeroing is one of the methods to solve this. It w instead of just maintain one consumer index, we are now maintain two. 
The first is the consumer head, which could be treated as the real consumer index. So after each packet was consumed by a consumer, we will advance the consumer head, but we do not zero the entry. Instead, we track the next entry to be invalidated through another variable called consumer tail. So in this case, we can see that we can keep the producer a little bit far away from the consumer. And we will only start try to zeroing the entries when the consumer is two catch line far away from the producer. And we also will do the zeroing in the reverse order. So the reason that we do it in the reverse order is that we need to make sure that the producer won't make any progress and it will stay at the catch line. This can avoid extra catch line bonusing. So after the batch steering, we can see that at that time, if the producer want to produce several new entries, there will be no catch line bonusing at all because the consumer is very far from the producer. And on top of the batch steering, we introduce the batch dequeuing. So the reason for this is that in our case, it it may have more multiple consumers and the producers. So we need to spin lock to synchronize between them. And the batch dequeuing is a, a good technology to amortize the, the cost on the spin lock. So in this case, we will try to dequeue several pointers in each round. So after this batch dequeuing, any pointers could be accessed in a lock-free way. So this can also reduce the catch miss furtherly because the consumer is even more far away. And this needs some uh, cooperations from the VOS Net because the current uh, API, socket API used by TAP does not support this. So the solution is that we export the pointer ring to VHostNet, and then VHostNet will try to dequeue the all the pointers of the so socket buffers in its own array. And then VHostNet will try to pass the SKB back to the TAP through the control message. So in this case, when we do receiving, there's no spin lock, at least in the receiving of the tab. And the other things we can learn from the DPDK vhost PMD backend is that traditionally uh, the VHostNet implementation in kernel does not do batching at all. So it, uh, it can only receive or transmit a packet, one packet at a time. But the VHost PMD that does the batching very aggressively. So let's see why. So this is the this is the worst case for the cache misses for each word queue access. So when you try to, for example, to process an Rx packet from the point of, of view of the VHostNet, it will cause at most five cache misses. The first is try to read the available index. And the second is that we read the index from the available ring. And the third is that we use this index as an offset of the distributed table. And the fourth miss is that we try to write back this index in the user ring. And the fifth is that we update the user index. So file misses for one packet. That is really bad. So we can easily amortize the cache misses through batching. So if we can batch four packets in a batch, what we can have. So in this case, we can still get one miss when reading the available index. And uh, but we can but we can only get one miss when we read batch read the index from the available ring. So one miss for four pack and one is for four distributed 
readings from the descriptor table, and one is when write the for index in the user ring, and another one is when during update the up use the index. So after using the batching, we in the best case, so we can only get 1.25 misses per packet. So that's pretty good. So the batching is still working on in progress. So I've done some. So we can see that it can reduce the cache misses, and it can also reduce the cache stretching when the ring is almost empty and uh, or full. So the things is rather similar to what we happen or what we see the in the pointer ring. That's because that device or driver won't make any progress when the index changes. So and another advantage is that if we batch the reading, we can use something like fast string copy function. And then we can benefit from modern CPUs, which has specific open optimizations on this. So there's a prototype which can batch reading the available index and batch update them in the user ring and update the user index in a bunch. So we can get about more than 20% of improvement in TX and more than 60% improvement in RX. So that's pretty good. And uh, the next step is trying to implement the batch distributor table ring. Okay, so after learning from the vHost PMD, we switch our attentions to the recent XCP. So XCP has lots of good stuff. So from our point of view, the most important part is the one of these actions called redirect. So this opens a chance that we can redirect the packet between a physical hardware NICs and tabs in a very fast way. So a typical XDP implementation requires several things. The first is that it requires a dedicated TX queue for lockless transmission. This is usually done through a per CPU TX queue or paired with RS queue. So that means that we need multi queue supported. And the XDP routine was usually run under the NAPI pool routing. So it was it will run before the SKB has been created. And a typical XDB implementation will disable all the large package support, for example, jumbo frame, RRO, or something like this. So if we want to re if we want to implement XDP for type, some things is a little bit different. The first challenge is that the type has multi queue support, but creating or destroying new queues was totally under the control of user space. That means that we could not change something, we could not implement something like per CPU TX queues for tab without notifying the guest. And unfortunately, there's no ways to notify the guest about such changes now. So the solution is that we reuse the exist TX queues for tab. One drawback is that it may require spin lock to synchronize, but anyway, it works. This could be done or optimized in the future. Another thing, another another challenge is that we could not disable the, the error or jumbo when gas is run. So the things, the, the situation is similar because we could not change such of configurations without notifying the guest. So we, we implement a hybrid mode of XCP implementation. That means that if we see a big packet, we will try to build the XKB and use the generic XCB helper to finish the XCB. And the next challenge is that usually the data copy was done with the SKB allocations for tab. So we solve this by decouple the, as the data copy out of the SKB allocation through the build SKB. In this case, 
we can first copy the packet and then do the XDB stuff. And if we want to use SKB, we can try to build it through build SKB. And the next thing is that there is really no NAPI by default. So we do it, so we decided to do it in the ten send message. And the last thing interesting is that the type support zero copy. So for simplicity, we just uh, do all the XCP for zero copy packet through the generic XDB layer. The reason is that XDB really requires some headrooms to do something like head adjustment. But for zero copy packet, maybe there's no way currently for get to, to let guests to reserve something like headrooms for us. So we can only do it through the generic XDB layer now. So this is uh, a figure to show how the hybrid XDB was implemented in tab. So for zero or big packet, we just pass it to the generic XDB helpers. That works, except for the XDB redirect. So this needs to be fixed. And for the some for small packet, we will first do the data copy, and then we will implement a native XDB implementation. And I if it needs to be dropped, we can drop after right now. And if we want to redirect it to a host NIC, so we will build the XDB buffer and call the XDB transmission routines from the host. This has been merged in upstream, so we can tr we can now try to use XDB to accelerate the gas transmission. And for the guest uh, receive receiving, it usually requires the XDB transmission support for tab. So we implement a prototype, which which was done through a pointer ring, which is really similar to what Jasper did for the CPU map. And we also store the XDP metadata in the headroom of the the packet. So when we want to redirect uh, RX buffers to the tab, we will first build an SKB buffer and kill it, kill the pointer of it in a pointer ring. And we also need to make sure that the if we call the time receive message, this packet could be received. And we also want we also need to support the batch dequeuing since it was a requirement for VHOSNet. So for guest part, we still has XDB support. So for guest is it looks much straightforward. It was multi queue based, which means that we have per CPU TX XDB queue and we need to reserve enough queue pairs during the VM launching. And for offload, we try to disable the flows on demand. That means if XDB is set, we try to disable them through the word queue control command. And the next is that there's no reset during the XDB set. The reset is really required because we need to reserve extra headroom. But we choose to use another idea. So before the XDB set, we don't reserve any headroom. And after the XDB set, we will try to reserve headroom. So there will be a small chance that we meet a packet which has been allocated before XDB was set. So we detect this case and do the data copy. So this is a little bit slow, but should be work and should be rare. And what's more important is that we also support XDP redirection and transmission. This means that we can use the XDP to accelerate the traffic for something like a Nest VM. No page recycling was supported yet, so I it was nice to have. <coughs> okay, so the performance evaluation. So this is uh, the, the, the setup of the test. We try to genera genera generate the traffic through the test PMD, which is located on a remote host. And we use another test PMD inside the guest 
to do some to do the transmission or receiving. So the reason we use TSMD in guest is that we found that traffic generator is uh, is not very suitable for our case, and because it was. It, it, it was slow, and the current Vortel net driver cannot cooperate with the package generator very well, since we do not have TX interrupt by default. Okay, here so here is the Arx performance. So we can see from the Linux 4.5, we get many interesting features which can help the performance. So the one thing I want I want to mention is that let's take about uh, let's take a look at the 4.11. The XGB driver switch to use as the build SKB. So after this commit we can also get some improvement. This is an example of how we can get benefit from the improvement of the host driver. And the two major improvements was all under development. The first is the XDB transmission. So we can see that after we use it, we can increase the performance from 2.45 million PPS to 3 million. And if we do RX batching on top, we can get about 5 million RX PPS. So for TX, XDP still helps a lot. So after using XDP, the performance boost from the around the one to about 2.6. And if we do something like um, batching or bypass the flow caches, we can get about 3 million TX PPS. So that looks very good. So I it's time to com compare against the test PMD now. So with the support of the XDP redirect, things With the support of the XDP redirect, we can get um, more fair computation because the setup looks much more similar to what test PMD did. And the only difference is that for the guest receiving, all things was done usually by two process. One is the software queue daemon and another is VHostNet. But for transmission, all things was done in the VHostNet. So, so here we are. So. For TX, we can get uh, 3 million PPS, and for RX, we can get 5. So there's a, a good improvement for the past uh, several versions, plus the some something something new. But we are still far from what the SMD can get, can give us. OK, so to do, to do is to continue to optimize the the code. So this is the first perf top for case of the QRX. So we can see that the spin lock contention, which is probably because of we need to use spin lock to synchronize the producers. So we probably can solve this or amortize this through batch in QE. And the next is the XGBE RX routing, which is good. So and the third is the SOC, the SOC def readable. This is looks a little bit interesting. So this should be this should not be there. So still need some investigation. And this is the proof top for Vihos Night thread RX. So this looks normal. All things related to the something like uh, data copy, distributed translator, or something like this. And this is the proof for VHostNet TX. So we can see the first is the distributor trans translation. So we may get some bottleneck in this. This is probably because that currently we use an uh, interval tree to store the mappings. So we probably need something to accelerate this. And the next is the 10 get user, which is normal because we need to do transmission. And the third is also interesting. The VHOS get VQ descriptor, which means that they probably still some cache thrashing. Then we try to access the, the descript table because we don't implement the batch descriptor table re read. So 
it looks uh, a nice optimization on top. So here's some raw ideas on how to improve. The first is maybe we can try to integrate this something like nappy busy pooling or implement a uh, pure busy pooling model for your net. And for XDP, we probably need a bad better XDB collaborations for the hardware NIC vendors because each hardware NIC drivers has its own optimizations for page recycling. So we need probably need a better way to cooperate. And the next things worth to be done is build and receive SKB or XDB buffers in Windows Net. And the next is probably we can try to implement something like X0 copy. An uh, IBM engineers is presented uh, an idea which use a new NDO and in this NDO it can try to post an Rx buffers from gas user space to MacVitab and MacVitab will try to push it in the host Rx leak buffers. And the last thing is that uh, uh, we see that patching helps a lot for word help and we host performance. So in order to address all the limitations of the current Vertel layout, we try to invent a new ring layout called Vertel 1.1. So if any of you have interest in, in this, please feel free to comment on it. Okay, that's it. Any question? Okay, he's sitting between you and the beer right now. So any questions? I so pointer ring works uh, with two locks. There's a consumer lock and a producer lock, which I guess works perfectly for you guys because you usually want one CPU queuing packets up and the other dequeuing because they're yes. on you know different sizes of the VM. Uh, wondering if you'd be willing to accept patches to make the whole thing lockless. Um, yes, of course. Patch has more than will come. <laughs> Okay, well I, I just. In fact, I, I it, it, it has lockless version. So if you call the lockless version, it still works. The oh, CPU okay. map has already used the lockless version of the pointer ring. So it has a lockless version. In in pointer ring. I, in pointer ring, right? Is it that is that upstream yet, or is this upstream? Is Whoa. Yeah. Okay. If you think there's no need for a spin lock, you can just call the lockless version. Uh, okay, we'll talk about it offline. I haven't looked at it. Does it do lockless compare exchange, or does it do uh, uh, assuming that somebody else is doing the locking for it? But uh, we don't we don't use the lockless version. But in in, in some case, for example. If you are sure that you are the only reader or writer, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, I want to close to for Jason, please. Thank you. Uh,